transfer. Let's talk about lighting. Well, first we would have to talk about SSAO. So I know it's going to lag your computer or whatever, or the program, or what have you, but we're going to right click on the viewfinder, we're going to go into ambient occlusion. And while we're here, let's also talk about the progressive refinement. Progressive refinement is where you can see how it looks bad here, and then you go into the timeline editor, and then it looks less bad. Like all the, like all the graininess, like look here on he on his neck and on heavy shirt all of it smooths out when we go here that's progressive refinement um you can turn it off so that it doesn't spend the time uh trying to uh think it up and it will look the same in both views um but i'm going to keep it on um we want a sub pixel jitter for poster you want sub pixel jitter and depth of field motion blur isn't really in it because you well, you're not animating anything, so motion blur isn't really a, a thing you need. But um, for depth of field, you usually want to turn it up because using camera settings makes it kind of bad. My computer can handle it at this much. It can. It is a big and strong boy, tough and beefy. But usually, you'd probably want it maybe somewhere around 128. Maybe if you're feeling frisky, 256. I don't know what any of these mu any of these numbers mean, but I I do the big one because it's big and cool. So right now the SSAO is, meh. I mean it's there. It makes it look. It gives it depth. It gives the picture depth. But what if we could make it look better? We can. First, we're going to click on the camera and we're going to go back into the motion viewer by clicking this 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 thing. Uh, for, like we do with the focal distance, we're going to, we are going to use sliders to adjust the SSAO, right here. Um, usually what I do is I start from radius to bias, but, uh, I can explain them as we go down. Actually, I could explain all the camera controls while we're here. Uh, field of view, uh, changes the, how much of the, uh, camera the camera see or how much of the world the camera sees you can pull it out and it can see a lot but it also stretches things out in an action shot like if you were having a character who was flying towards the camera you could use this and it would make perspective look make things look really cool um but usually you kind of want it somewhere like just above the uh baseline here Focal distance, uh, like I said, it is the field at which you want the camera to focus on, which works in, complete, uh, in tandem with aperture, which um, is, an aperture is basically, if you've seen the aperture science uh, logo, it's like a, it's a, it is an actual camera aperture, which is a tiny hole that it allows light into and which changes the focus. So imagine the more you turn this up, Imagine that there is a uh, invisible circle that's closing around um, the uh, the thing. Um, everything that the camera is not focused on will become more blurry. And the higher you put it up, everything that's not in the dead center in this like little square that um, uh, you that's like right in the middle here. I, I'm pointing at it like you can see it, but you can see like there's a square here. This the square. Everything that's not within it and like in that field will become more and more blurry so you don't want too high or too low see if we turn it really high it blurs out everything except the things that were directly inside of the uh the field see spider-man's blurred out we don't want that now maybe if you are having a character that if you have like oh we're just focusing on this character yeah you could do that some of the TF2 promotional images do that. But you can see that, like, some of the, the, this guy, he's out of focus. The heavy's hand isn't in focus. A lot of things are out of focus. If we turn it real low, then everything is in focus. And it becomes hard. It's like, we don't really, we want you to focus on the three characters, not the stuff back here. So what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of eyeball it turn it up a little bit and switch back see how it looks pretty good 
Maybe add a little bit more. That's good. It's starting to blur out Spider-Man, though. So let's move it back. Just a bit. Hmm. What song is playing? Uh, there is a tab below the stream that will show you uh, what I'm playing on Spotify right now. Anyway, yeah, this looks pretty good. I think it could use a little bit less, but it it's looking... This is a good amount of aperture for this picture. Maybe if I pull back the focal distance a bit so that Spider Tiger gets a bit more in it. There we go. Good. Now let's talk about the uh, Bloom Scale. The Bloom Scale... Or no, the Tone Map Scale is next. Tone Map Scale, if a map is too bright, you can turn, down the dar you can turn up the darkness in it. If it's too dark, you can make it brighter. Now, uh, me personally, because of how I like things, I like things to be a bit darker, or at least just on the level. Like about here is good for me. Um, then bloom scale is how much uh, everything blooms. Like you can see that there is a little bit of radiance off of like the side of Heavy's head and his arm and everything. If we turn it down, it gets rid of that. Like you can see all of it disappeared. Like, let me, let me redo it. It comes back. It goes away. If we turn it up, it increases the bloom in the picture. Sometimes this can be good. Sometimes it can give it a, a cool, like, uh, dreamy look. Sometimes you can keep going and then, oh. Oh, man. Oh, that's, that's a bit too much. Maybe let's roll that one back. A little bit of bloom isn't too bad, but um, I personally like low bloom in my things. Um, now let's go on to SSO bias. When you uh, the SSAO can be changed, and when you uh, change the bias, the bias is basically saying how much you don't want the SSAO to be on. Turn it down, it basically covers everything. If we turn it up. It goes until it's basically covering almost nothing. We kind of want it a little bit in the shades, just kind of, just not, not too much, not too little, kind of like more around the edges of everything, like around here. Strength is how like intense you want the SSAO. A lot will make it really hairy. None will take all of it away. I kind of want something like here, so that you'll see it and it gets a little bit, it adds to the shadows, but it's not like overpowering. And then radius is how far out you want it. Again, if you turn it all the way down, it basically gives you nothing. If you turn it all the way up, it covers everything. It's how far it reaches out from where it is. Want something like this. Not too much, not too little. We don't want it to cover everything, but we want it to be noticeable. Now, there's one more thing I'm going to show you how to do because uh, I, I'm, I'm going to show you how to go above and beyond. It's not even that hard to do. We're going to right click on the camera, go to show an element viewer, go to camera, click on that, and it will show you the basically all the things having to do with the a more in depth, sciencey version of the uh, camera. You can see everything is now in values. If you knew what exactly what value you wanted to apply to it, like if someone was like, "Oh, cool, that's that post looks really great." What was your aperture at? Oh, my aperture was 1.574074029. That means nothing to me, but and also I apparently can't change it. If you want to actually change it, you could double click on aperture and then change it there but it you know whatever but here the thing that I really only mess up mess with here is SSAO tint um, if you're an artist you know about uh, shading with black and how a lot of times you don't want to do that you want to shade with a darker color than like just a slightly darker color sometimes depending on the strength of the shadow um, you click on this, and it'll bring up this thing that will show you a basically a color wheel. You can go through here and see all the different colors, and you can pick through here. Usually what I go for is kind of an off red, and this will change the color of the, uh, the SSAO completely. Usually I want to go somewhere like here to where... Red, I choose red because it's, it's a common skin tone between all the TF2 characters. 
Uh, but we also want to compliment Sp Spiderman. So, we can go with, like, kind of a dark red. It, it can change based on what whatever looks good to you. Do you want to get something that, like, looks like it's, it's you're shading the skin? Like, I'm looking at this part of Heavy's head, like, up here. That's what I want. So, I've gone with this kind of off red. Sometimes if you want something to be a little bit brighter, you can go with that. Sometimes that can look good. Sometimes you can go with like a like a lighter. You don't really want it to be intense, cause well, sometimes maybe you want it to be, but here I don't want it to be intense. Here's the thing: I want it to be light, like uh, um, I'm like here. Okay, and we want to make sure we do that before lighting because it's very important. Now another thing. I'm again going to get into. Uh, Yeah, um, so I'm going to get into something a bit, again, a bit more complex, but that's just because I want you guys to make really, really primo pick. Oh, I can't do that because of heavy. Hold on, let me, let me just, let me just, let me just, yeah, heavy doesn't have that. Oh, okay, all right, all right, so lighting this is going to be a challenge. Hold on, let me, uh, does this guy have it? Yeah, he has it. Alright, so let me show you something that I do. We're gonna go into Element Viewer, Model, and we're gonna go to Helper. It doesn't have to be this, I just like to use this. This is just a, a mo this is the model for a tool that is used within development for games. But, we're going to take it, and we're going to go somewhere dark. I'm gonna go somewhere nice and void of as much light as possible on this map. Where can we find lots and lots of dark? Some nice dark darkness. Here's good. Right here. So we're going to click on Access Helper. We can see it through the walls. We're gonna go to the move tool, click on the circle, hit Alt, and then drag to the left until it shows up here. Now you can see that the the, the helper is really dark, right? I should expand this because you need to see this more than the names of the bones and stuff. What we're gonna do is we're going to right click on the Axis Helper's animation set in the animation set editor window. We're gonna go to show an element viewer, model, and then we're going to right click on here in the window. You see, Illume Position Dag. We're gonna right click and copy it. We're going to go to Inf Spider-Man, and we're going to go to show, show an element viewer model. We're going to right-click on his Illume Position Dag. We're going to go to Paste Special, Paste his Reference. Now I made him completely dark. We want that. We're going to do the same thing with the civilian. Show an element viewer model, Illume Position Dag, right-click, Paste Special, Paste his Reference. Made him completely dark. We're going to go to the potassium bonnet. Right click, show an element viewer model, balloon position dag, base special, basis reference. We're going to go to heavy. Right click, show an element viewer model. Uh oh. Heavy doesn't have that. I have no idea why the hardware morph TF2 models do not have this thing, but it doesn't. Do that to the ring too. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna do something really quick. Um, you, I, I guess, I don't know. Let me see, um, no, uh, do I have a different kind of heavy from the workshop? Oh wait, I can just look up workshop, heavy. Space heavy, dead space heavy, a robot heavy, a maimed heavy, enhanced heavy. Oh, okay. Well, actually, this might be good. Uh, this might be good to show you something. Um, you can copy and paste positions and animations to multiple characters or to different characters. Let's take. Let me 
Super Saiyan on this window. Let's click on Heavy and go into the uh, animation editor, or the motion editor. Right click on the green, copy samples. Then we go to Heavy Enhanced, right click, paste samples. Where did where'd the word Heavy Enhanced go? Let's turn off Heavy Normal. Huh. Because the, um, we have pasted the samples from this heavy onto the other one, and I think this heavy actually has, yep, it has a loom position tag. We can paste special, paste his reference, and there we go. He's nice and dark. Um, this, you can do this with pretty much any model, but it will only apply it to the bones that have the same name, and it doesn't really work if they're not the same kind of model. Like, for example... Spawn. Actually, you know what? Yeah, let's 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 spawn this demo man, right? Let's paste the same uh, samples to the demo man. How does that look? Well, he's inside the heavy, so I can't tell. So let's take a look. Oh. Uh. Huh. Uh. Hmm. He's been stretched a bit. This is because SFM basically said, well, Heavy's arms are like this, so I guess he wants Heavy's Demo Man's arms to be in the exact same positions. Not just translating the movement to the other one. Huh. So that's how that works. And just for shits and giggles... Where is it? Where is it? Let's take Doc Lewis and do the same thing. I want to show you this. Um, hmm. This time, Doc didn't even do anything. He just moved there. That's because the only uh, bones that the two of them have in common are Root Transform. All of Doc's bones and controls are all named different things, and they're all in the unknown thing, because that's just kind of how some models are. Now, going over why I made every one of the models dark. Why the hell did I do that? What was, what was the point? Well, uh, if I don't, then everything is lit with the lighting in the map, and a lot of times that's too bright, and uh, I don't have as much control over how I want them to look as I do in the, uh, you know, with the lighting. So, by making them dark, I've basically uh, taken away the lighting that's here, and I instead gave them the lighting that the Axis Helper has. By copying the Illum Position Dag and pasting it to the other models, it, they're now lit like they were standing here where the loom position where the helper is now You don't have to use the helper. You just need to use any model that has a loom position tag like I could spawn a, a Bottle of bleach from left for dead and do the same thing Anyway, let's 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 go to our, our is it the final chapter is this the is this the last thing that I have? Yes last thing lighting Right click, create animation set for new light. Oh, right, your your thing probably looks a bit different than mine. Um, that's because I have a uh, show scene hierarchy checked. Without it, everything is just kind of in whatever order I spawn them in or whatever order I drag them in. Show scene hierarchy will put cameras in their own thing and lights in their own thing, and then they can allow you to put like, say, all this stuff, all these items, you can right click on them and say group selected DAGs and you can save space by creating groups, basically collapsible folders for things in your thing. Um, by default, SFMRE has cameras and lights in their own group. So uh, we've created a light. The light immediately starts wherever the camera is and adopts its uh, positions. It's It works kind of like a... Uh, a uh, a camera. In fact, if we want, we can take it and drag it to a view find to a viewport, and then we can control the light as if it were a camera. Pretty cool, huh? 
You can already tell, like right now, uh, how I'm lighting this. It has more of an, uh, the light has more influence over the models as opposed to, say, what? Didn't mean to do that. Um, it has more uh, control over the. Uh, like right now, uh, if I light right here, I mean it looks okay. It still has the the lighting, but this is I mean this is pretty dark. Let's talk about this here. Let's talk about this. Like it kind of the light doesn't have as much influence over the shed. It's hard to show. Anyway, you, you want to do that? So uh, I'm gonna talk about they have lots of the lights have lots of different controls, but I'm just kind of gonna go over. Uh, them as I go along because some of these you won't even use So to start when you light it you're going to want to create a light and position it to the side of your camera Or the side of the main point of the scene here Then you're going to right-click with the lights animation set and go to disable shadows Then you're going to turn it down pretty low Increase the radius. Uh, all right, turn it down pretty low. I, I shouldn't get ahead of myself. A lot of people don't know how to do that. The first thing on here is called intensity. Intensity can be turned down and you're most likely going to want to turn it down because it starts really fucking bright. And it gets even brighter. But you're gonna want this one low. Uh, ambient intensity, I have no idea what this does. Don't, I, I don't know. Horizontal field of view. Increases the uh, how far out the uh, how far out and in the uh, cam the light is. A lot of times you can just have it focus on the scene here, and that's good enough. Vertical field of view uh, increases how wide the light reaches to. So you want to make sure that lights everything. Radius. Um. I, I think it spreads it out. Like, imagine the light is butter, and you're putting it out over a, a toast. I don't know what it does. It just, it's good. It's it's good. You want it up, okay? Shadow filter size and shadow tension we will get to um, later, when we are actually working with a light that I haven't disabled the shadows for. Um, a lot of these you don't really need to know. Constant attenuation. Well, it does that. <laughs> Linear attenuation. I I also don't know. I've never used those two. Okay, here's one that I do know. Quadratic attenuation um, can increase the brightness and the darkness of the light without having to make it more or less intense. So, in case this light was too bright, we could bring it down like here. We want it a very low, uh, we want a very low light for this first light. And I will tell you why in a sec. Shadow depth by the, the things of the shadows I will get to later. Far Z attenuation is how far the uh, thing reaches. And that is changed with max and minimum distance. Maximum distance, it's actually easier if I... Hmm. Actually, yeah, I think I'll do that. Uh, let me create a new light and then just put it, uh, like, here. And I'm going to enable volumetric so you can actually see the light. Okay, so what I've done is I've created a light with volumetrics. So that you can physically see the light itself. Right? Okay, so let me show you, uh, me changing the max and minimum distance. You can see, uh, when I turn up the maximum distance, it brings it away from the base of the light and moves it a bit forward. It also focuses the light on things farther away. I turn up the minimum distance. Wait. I don't... Okay, look, I don't know what these do. Get, leave me alone! Fucking... I know how to light things one way, and I've been doing it my entire life. I'm not very good. I don't know what all these fucking things are. I'll just tell you what the things you actually want to know about are. Okay? The attention is, the, is how far short the light is. Volumetric intensity turns up 
the uh, the volume the intensity of how solid the light is in a volumetric light. It has no effect on non-volumetric light. Noise strength increases the noise of the thing as opposed to how much volumetric is in it. Width, I don't know. Edge width, I don't know. Height, who fucking cares? All these are dumb. Color red and green and blue work in a way that is instead of like turning them up, you are turning them down. See, right now the color, the light is white because it's red, green, and blue all at the same time making it white. If I turn down red, it starts to make it more turquoise because it is now it is more green and blue than it is red. If I turn down the blue, it turns more yellow because it is now red and green. Or if I turn, yeah, if I turn down the blue, it turns yellow because there's now only red and green light. If I turn down the green, it turns purple or violet because, yeah. So it's like actual light colors. Yes, exactly. So you want like kind of a, first off, you want to turn, the, a lot of times you're going to want to turn them all down for most of them. And then you're going to want to play around with them to get the kind of light that you think works best. I think that pretty much covers all the things you need to know about lights. But for this one, we're creating... What we're doing to start is we're creating a light that is going to mimic light surrounding it. Because this... We've made them dark. We've made all these characters dark so that they have really no light on them. So by making these low lights... These very low lights with low colors and low everything... We are filling in... The missing lights that uh, we would otherwise have and we want this light to be fairly noticeable and uh, we want it to be a bit more red and green so it's orange to match this dirt and less blue because there's not really any blue around and really you can just copy and paste and then we're gonna, just for organization's sake, you're going to put it back in the light group. We're going to copy and paste it, and we're going to bring it over here, and you want to put another one, another light without shadows, on this side. We're going to make sure that we see everything within the poster. That's light enough. This one, I think, we want a bit more, like... paste one more and we're going to put this one to the back zoom it in focal distance that should be good enough. okay so now we have these it doesn't look very lit the point of lighting isn't so that you can see things it's not just well it's not just so that you can see things it is so that you can make things look good. Now, you can just shine a light on something and be like, Well, there it is. You see it? See it? It's good. Yeah, it's good, right? No. It's to make it look good. Not so that it looks. So, we're going to make a new light. And... We're going to create a rim light. A rim light is create... It, the main use of a rim light is to make it so... You can uh, tell the difference between it's what you're trying to create is like a line on the outside of the uh, character or the model or whatever, so that uh, you can tell the difference between it and the background if anything shares the colors. Also, it looks really good. Uh, for this, I can now show you. I turn it down just a bit, and we are going to show you what shadow filter size and shadow attention do. Shadow uh, attention or shadow filter size is kind of like how mu how deep you want the shadows to be. As I turn it up, the uh, light seems uh, starts to take on more of the uh, the model, and it seems to even like kind of purse through other parts of it. We can turn it up until we uh, get it on pretty much everything around the models, and then shadow attention. Is how dark we want the shadows. We want this all the way dark because we still want it to be dark. Not like we don't want. 
We want it to be dark, we're just trying to light the outside, so we want it to have as less of an impact on everything else outside of it as possible. We can bring this in a bit, so it focuses more on it. You can turn it down as much as you need to. A lot of times I just like to use quadratic attention to turn down the brightness so that uh, how much it affects the uh, outside does not change. And we're gonna take make another one and we're gonna put it on this side so that both sides of the models are uh, seen. We want this high up and over to the side so that it can look down and brightly contrast everything in the uh, thing. Change this, make it print down about here. Get this all the way down. Turn down the tension. Sometimes uh, on certain uh, models, you want them to. You can sometimes put a rim light that goes like not just on the edge, but over the side, and you can color it. Like, let's color this rim light. Sure, why not? Make this one also. Again, we don't want to bring the blue all the way down. We still need some blue to lighten the color. I guess I'm like around here. I add sort of like a yellowish tint to the side. Um, I'm now noticing that I'm not really getting any on Spider-Man, so I'm gonna move it over a bit more. Now, hmm, I think maybe I wanna bring this down some. Try this because I'm trying to light Spider Man with this, but it's really only getting heavy in the uh, other guy. I'm trying to change the color on this one. Just a bit. Uh, that, that should work. Alright, so now we've got this thing uh, rimlet, right? We got uh, lights around the rim. But this is still really dark. Well, we're gonna make it even darker. If you can believe it. We're gonna take uh, a new light, and we're going to put it over the uh, looking down on our characters. Like this. Make sure we get everything. We're gonna turn down the... Intensity, turn up the radius, turn down the shadow filter size, or right, down the attention, and up the filter size just to... Uh, we don't want hard shadow... Alright, this is, this is probably a better example of what uh, shadow attention and shadow filter size do. Let's head back to where it was. Okay, the shadow filter size. As we turn it up, it, it's like a blur tool for uh, the shadows. We turn it down, it makes them really sharp. If we turn it up, it kind of smears them out. If we turn it all the way up, there's like, really, there's almost no shadow of visible because it's all spread out. You don't want, maybe you want it like this. Maybe that's your style. A lot of times, I want to turn it like here. That's about as uh, soft of shadows I want, and I want them dark like this. And then, let's turn it down... You want to turn it, cut it to about, like, here? Like, after the, like, right before the color green, match it all up. And then, uh, change depending on how, like, slightly, depending on how you want things colored. I'm gonna turn red up a bit, and turn blue down a bit, and keep, uh, green right where it is. Maybe we can turn down the quadratic attenuation just a bit. Because this is this the purpose of the slide is just to add shadows and uh, give the the light that's coming down from the sky, or maybe if you're say making something spooky, you could do the the opposite and have the light come up from here and then have the like shadows look up look up. But in this case, we're talking about the sun shooting down on these characters, so the light source would be from the top. Now, that's great and all, we, we kind of lit it up, but it's still dark. What are we supposed to do about that? We're going to take a light, one light, we're going to move it over this way, to the side, to the front, but a little bit to the side. We're going to make it wide, zoom in a bit, we're going to 
turn it down until it kind of covers everything. And we're going to use this light, turn up the radius to about half. And we're going to use this light to color in the shadows. Everything dark is going to be colored with the shadows. So we want something like... Usually what you want to do with this is reflect the ground in some way. I want to like, I want to reflect the color of the ground onto the uh, the characters because that's where the color would come. We're gonna make another one uh, similar right here, and now you can see that it's kind of casting shadows. So what we want to do is want to blur those out by turning up the filter size and turning it down, turning up the radius to half, and we'll turn it. Just give it no blue and make it a bit more yellow. See? That look doesn't that look pretty? Doesn't that look doesn't that look like a, a fucking lovely lovely thing? Now we can go one beyond this. Like I did before, I'm going to create a volumetric light. What about here? Sometimes I like to use them for like a supplemental uh, volume or rim light, but we're gonna enable volumetrics and we're gonna use it to fill in the, uh, basically, we're gonna use this to fill in the dead space with a little bit of like pixelation. Because a volumetric light is like a solid light. It's a light that you can physically see. Right, like... Here. Like this. And then, um... We can either use the quadratic attenuation to turn it down or up. Um... Or we can use the noise strength and volumetric intensity to increase the volumetrics. And then turn down the noise. A lot of times uh, you can use this to like, uh, imitate the sun being out and like sun rays or something. Or dust in the wind or something like that. But yeah. And there you go. You have yourself your first poster. I hope I taught you how this was, like, actually, how this actually worked, and you actually understood it, as opposed to me just babbling on for an hour and explaining things that only I understood. But, um, yeah. Anyway, um, when you're ready to export uh, this poster, when you see it and you're like, yeah, I'm happy with this, you click on File, you go to Export, and then you're going to click poster. It'll ask you if you want to save. You're going to save it. Um, and then it will uh, automatically... Uh, it'll automatically put, like, set the thing to render it as the file name poster in renders. You can either look, change it through a dialog in here, or you can just, like, click this if you're okay with it being in posters, and you can just say, like... You can call this, like, my first poster. And then you can change the file type. You can go to TGA, PNG, or JPEG. Uh, you can change the dimensions. Um, I have it set. Uh, you can change it however you want. You can have it constrained if you want it or whatever. And, um, yeah, and then you just hit export poster, and after a little bit, it will poop it out and you can put it into Photoshop and make it look even better or you can just have it as it is but um that is it for this um this tutorial the very first tutorial I've done I think I could have done it better but I am happy that I did it at all and I hope you all uh, learned something I will be doing this again next week um yeah, I hope uh, I hope uh, to see you guys there. 
And um, I hope you all will uh, learn something with me tomorrow. Um, thank you, Illuminal, for the 300 bits. And I, I, you don't have to pay me for this lesson, but I appreciate it. Um, yeah, so I will see you all next week. Don't remember, don't, don't, don't eat things off of the floor. They probably have ants in them.